Hi folks. Today we're going to take a look at the SAM cab module in a Freightliner Cascadia. So what is a SAM? Well, they're basically cab mounted ECUs. Freightliner calls it a signal detection and actuation module, or SAM. The SAM cab works closely with the SAM chassis to control much of the vehicle functionality. While the SAM chassis controls most of the chassis functions, the SAM cab controls most of the cab functions. It's a vehicle power distribution module that manages the cab electrical functions. The SAM cab communicates with the other ECUs in the Cascadia using the CAN data bus. This ECU uses inputs such as switches, sensors, and data link messages, and drives outputs such as lights, motors, and solenoids. It powers and controls everything from dash and switch backlighting to power locks, windows, and even fuel-fired auxiliary heaters. It provides power to other cab-mounted modules on the cab and CAN network, and others like the instrument cluster and HVAC controllers. It also works along with the HVAC controllers to run the AC compressor. In some configurations, it even starts the engine. Most of its outputs are controlled with FETs, or field effect transistors. Some are fuse protected and others are not. When they're not fused, they're monitored and turned off when they go over current. It also uses bistable relays to achieve what Freightliner calls progressive low voltage disconnect. When the engine isn't running and battery power begins to drop, these relays progressively turn off cab loads to maintain battery power. It can also broadcast fault codes when there is a problem with a number of these components or circuits. When it does this, you may see something like cab 33 on the instrument cluster display. The SAM cab also has parameters that can be viewed or changed for vehicle configuration. The SAM cab software can be programmed using service link or diagnostic link, which will update to its same version or upgrade it if required. Reflashing the software can sometimes be a last ditch effort to fix a faulty SAM cab if there's a chance it may have become corrupted. The SAM cab is mounted on the passenger side of the vehicle. It is mounted on the inside of the cab but protrudes through to the outside of the firewall. Access is achieved by removing the glove compartment and the protective shields. In my experience, most SAM cab failures tend to be due to water intrusion and corrosion. The Cascadia tends to be about as watertight as a screen door. Protective covers and drip shields can only do so much. There's been a number of recalls and campaigns focused on protecting cab mounted ECUs from water. It's gotten better, but it's still not perfect. So, you've determined that your SAM cab is faulty and needs to be replaced. Replacing one is not very difficult. Here's how you go about doing it. Begin by disconnecting power to the unit, preferably by disconnecting the batteries. I tend to start from the outside of the vehicle. Reach up into the area behind the HVAC ducting and disconnect the four lever lock connectors from the nose piece of the SAM cab. Then disconnect the positive and negative power cables. Now moving to the inside, remove the torque screws that hold the glove compartment in place and remove it. Remove the three plastic drip shields that should be in place above the SAM cab. Remove the lower dash panel to gain access to the bottom side of the SAM cab. Then you can reach in and disconnect the four bottom side connectors and then disconnect all of the top side connectors. Now remove the two torque screws and one 13mm bolt attaching the SAM cab to the mounting plate. Slide it forward and then up and out to remove it. Now sorry about the blurry picture, but your new SAM cab will come with many fuses and relays missing since these trucks can be configured in many different ways. So you'll just have to transfer over any missing pieces from the old one to the new one. Once this is done, you're ready to reinstall. Reinstallation is basically the reverse order of removal, but with some extra attention paid to a couple of areas. First is to make sure no wiring has been pinched in between the SAM cab and the firewall once it's mounted back in place. Another is to position all wiring on the right side of the SAM cab in a certain way. Now verbatim from Freightliner's manual it says, shape drip loops in the harnesses on the right side of the SAM so the lower part of the loop is below the right edge of the SAM. The drip loops are tucked between the SAM and the side wall of the cab. They want you to do this so water drips off the wire instead of traveling along it and finding its way into the module. Also make sure to reinstall all drip shields. These things need their umbrellas installed, or their lifespan will be cut significantly shorter. Now, when a SAM cab is being replaced, 
It must be reprogrammed with the specific parameters for the vehicle in which it's being installed. Use service link or diagnostic link to download and program the parameters for the same cab. All the ECUs on the CAN data bus must be at a compatible version of software for data communication to occur properly. When a SAM cab is replaced, use service link or diagnostic link to determine if the SAM chassis, MSF, and CGW are all communicating at compatible versions of software. So, that does it for this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And I'd also encourage you to support the channel on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a video, you can really help out the channel and keep these videos coming. Of course, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be updated on when new videos are uploaded. And as always, Thanks for watching.